Hi, it's Miss Vital. This unit is on evolution. This is the first part of many podcasts for evolution. It is meant to correspond with chapters 22, 23, 24, and 25. You may have read the book Inherit the Win, or you may have seen the movie. It was based on the Scopes Monkey Trial, as it's oftentimes called, and it occurred in Dayton, Tennessee in 1925. A high school teacher named John Scopes went on trial for violating a state law that prohibited teaching evolution in public schools. It became a media circus. The law prohibiting the teaching of evolution was never intended to be enforced, but the ACLU, the American Civil Liberties Union, thought that the law violated the First Amendment, which was for free speech, and so Scopes agreed to be arrested. He actually wasn't even a biology teacher. He was a physics teacher and a coach and never even taught evolution, but substituted for biology teacher once and was told to assign pages that covered evolution in the textbook. Two famous lawyers, William Jennings Bryan and Clarence Darrow, wanted the same outcome. They wanted Scopes' conviction. The ACLU wanted a clean conviction so they could appeal in a higher court and have the anti-evolution law overturned. But this didn't happen. In an ironic twist, the ACLU won the battle but lost the war. Scopes was convicted but then acquitted on a technicality. The judge technically violated the law when he fined Scopes $100 himself instead of letting the jury do do it. The ACLU never got to appeal the case, and the anti-evolution law stayed in effect for 42 years, until 1967. American textbook publishers got scared and reduced or eliminated evolution from their books. In 1942, less than half of high school teachers were covering evolution. After 1957, when Sputnik was launched, which was the Soviet Union's first satellite, the U.S. began emphasizing better science education. During the Cold War, when Sputnik was launched by the Soviet Union, Americans were very upset and very concerned because at that point it seemed like the Soviet Union was beating us in spacecrafts. When the United States began emphasizing better science and the reappearance of evolution in textbooks occurred, it fired up the controversy about teaching evolution in schools again. In 1973, anti-evolutionists in Tennessee passed a bill calling for equal time teaching evolution and creation. Creationism states that the earth was created recently and each species was created individually. The Equal Time Bill was later declared unconstitutional on the grounds that it violates the separation of church and state. In 1981, a creationist filed suit in California charging that teaching evolution violates his children's religious freedom. The judge rejected the lawsuit. At the same time, Arkansas and Louisiana passed bills that teachers also teach creation science. Creation science states that there is a sudden creation of the universe, energy, and life from nothing. And the insufficiency of mutations and natural selection in bringing about the development of all living kinds from a single organism. In other words, they believed that mutations and natural selections couldn't possibly account for all of the diversity of life on Earth. The third thing was that there are only changes within fixed limits of originally created plants and animals. So whatever was originally created has not changed very much. And that there is a separate ancestry for men and apes. It also includes the explanation of the Earth's geology by catastrophism, including the occurrence of a worldwide flood, which would refer to Noah's Ark, and a recent inception of the earth and somewhat later of life. If you follow the Bible from the New Te- from the Old Testament all the way to present time, it accounts for about 6,000 years. A lot of people who 
literally interpret the Bible feel that earth and life on earth has always only been around for about 6,000 years. More recently, intelligent design was created by this Discovery Institute, basically a group of politically conservative people, and they claim that life as we know it could not have developed through random natural processes, and that only the guidance of some kind of intelligent being, a higher power, can explain the complexity and diversity of life that we see today. In 1982, a federal judge, William R. Overton, overturned the law because it was considered teaching religion. He also said that while anyone is free to approach a scientific inquiry in any fashion they choose, they cannot properly describe the method used as scientific if they start with the conclusion and refuse to change regardless of the evidence developed during the course of the investigation. In 1987, the Supreme Court affirmed this decision 7-2, to two, ending a 128-year-old dispute. The modern debate about evolution began in 1859 when Charles Darwin published his arguments for the evolution of species in his book called On the Origin of Species by Means of Natural Selection or the Preservation of Favored Races in the Struggle for Life. Darwin's book offended people in three ways. The first was that the earth is very old. Again, people believe that the earth is only about 6,000 years old based on the Bible. The second is that one species could change into another. They dispute the fact that a species can change and over time change into a new or different species. And they were very offended by the suggestion that animals and that humans and apes were related. Darwin's theory had two main points. Natural selection is the differential reproductive success of individuals due to genetically inherited traits. In other words, the differences amongst individuals of the same species give some advantages and some disadvantages. And the ones with the more advantages are going to be the ones to reproduce and pass those advantages on to their offspring. The second was that present species descended from ancestral species. That's really evolution, or as Darwin called it, descent with modification. This is the process by which species arise and change over time. All organisms have, have descended from common ancestors. If organisms have evolutionary adaptations, which an adaptation is defined as a characteristic that improves its chance of surviving. Therefore, it will also reproduce in a given environment. It's important to remember that the environment picks the traits that are favorable. If the environment changes, what previously was favorable in the other environment may no longer be favorable in a new environment. And so the individuals that do better in a given environment will survive and reproduce. And if those differences and those advantages are genetic, then those will be passed on to the next generation. As these adaptations accumulate over time, eventually a new species can form.